Hello everyone and welcome to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Sean and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Sneel. I'm Sean. And today we are in 1978 and we're looking at Ringing Bell. From... Or otherwise known as Chirin's Bell. Yes. This is from Sanrio in Japan, the Hello Kitty people. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the f- second movie, actually, we've seen from Sanrio. Yes. <laughs> yes, because they also gave us the mouse and his child last year. Mm-hmm. Want to throw that sick little piece of information on us? So, this was actually released as a double feature of the mouse and his child with the ringing bell. And, oh man, did this really, really outshine the movie that it was paired with. Yeah, absolutely. So it makes me wonder why this has a completely different release date. I don't know. I think the, the, so, I think our release dates that we're looking at is release dates for... I don't know. Something wonky is going on there where we're looking at release dates for either when it came over to America Mm -mm. or the double feature happened here in America. Maybe. I don't know. I do like I do my best when I look at the release dates. I go for the date that it released in its original country. Yeah. But this makes me wonder if there is some sort of like film festival where they were a double feature on and that's where they came out and then they were separate when they went to actual theaters or the other way around yeah who knows i don't know but we're watching ringing bell and this is one of those infamous movies that a lot of people know about and then they forget about and then they remember and they're like what the hell was this (laughs) it was so cute but so dark at the same time and it's really good (laughs) Mm-hmm. It's it's really good. Like, All right. Yeah. Let's get into that. Let's do a plot. Okay. So Chirin is a tiny little sheep baby. He's cute and stuff. Lamb. Lamb. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, he lives on a little farm with his family and his mom. And his mom's like, you gotta stay inside the fence or else you'll go get eaten up by the big bad wolf named Woe. Yep. Woe. Woe is he. Uh... Well, one night there's a storm. Woe gets into the the barn, kills a couple sheep, including Mom. Yep. And Chirin swears revenge, and he climbs the mountain up and finds Woe, and he's like, I'm gonna fight you. And Woe's like, I'm not gonna eat you because you're a baby and, like... Uh, Come back in, like, four years. <laughs> go back to the farm and get fat so I can eat you in four years or something like that. Right. And Sheeran's like, no. I'm, I'm not a sheep anymore. I'm going to be a wolf just like you. Teach me how to be a wolf. Because it's not fair that sheep are weak. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be weak. So then he trains with the wolf over the course of, like, multiple years. And he turns into this giant hell demon goat sheep thing. <laughs> You're really struggling with... The concept what? of a sheep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but like, he's like long, lithe, limbered. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got giant, wicked horns and stuff. Yeah. And he's like, I'm a man now. I'm a monster and I can kill. And it's all thanks to you, whoa, my surrogate dad. Yep. And they run around and they fight off other animals and they kill them and stuff. And then... One day they go back to the farm where Chirin was raised and Woe is like, you go into the barn and you kill them. Mm-hmm. Do it, because they're just pathetic sheep. And this is the way of nature in the world. And Chirin's like, wait, I can't do this. This is wrong. I was a sheep. I should protect them. And then he fights and kills Woe. But the other sheep are terrified of him because he's scary and like a homicidal lunatic and he can no longer be accepted by them and so he leaves and goes back to the mountain 
and is super... When he kills Woe, though, Woe says, like, I'm proud of you for, for doing this. And, it's like, like, I it's always knew that I was going to die by your by your hands. It's and... like, one of us was going to kill the other. Yeah, this is how it was meant to be. Yeah, and so Charon is like, no! I've lost everything in my quest for revenge. And now I don't have mom or dad. Or a community. Or anything. So he lives a lonely life on the mountain. And every now and again, you can still hear a ringing bell. Yep. Pretty metal, honestly. Like. Yeah. And like, that's it. Dope as hell. It's a really short movie. It was Mm -hmm. only like 45 minutes or so. So like, normally we wouldn't watch it, but like. But this one's so infamous. This we was had so to. good. Yeah. The animation, fantastic. The, the music, character design, like everything. Yeah. This yeah. is just so well done. This this short reminds me so much of the, um, like early '40s Disney shorts type things, where it's just like this is like an experimental little piece. And, like, all parts are just, like, banging on all cylinders. And, like, everything just works together to tell, like, this really effective story. You know? Like, this is probably, no, definitely the best animation we've seen out of this year. Which, I mean, it's not really hard because we've had the two South Korean films, which were relatively low budget. And then Krabate, which was very interesting and cool, but, like... Not traditionally animated and like... Yeah. This... Oof, my eyes. <laughs> they sparkle. Yeah. Yeah, I I loved this. Um, I had only seen bits and pieces of it beforehand. Like, I knew about this film, but I hadn't sat down and watched it myself before we watched it uh, today. And yeah, it did not disappoint. Just so heckin' good. And another thing I want to bring up, because this is obviously pretty important to me... But this movie is very, very, very Bambi inspired. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously it's not. I'm not saying that, you know, it's unoriginal or, you know, like they committed some kind of like crime for taking inspiration from Bambi because that's not what I'm saying at all. But... What I am saying is that it's Bambi inspired and that makes it better. There's so many scenes that are like basically direct shot for shot recreations of something that happened in Bambi. The the beginning with Chirin, there's a lot of moments that are very similar similar to Bambi growing up. And then later on, when he gets older, there's a fight with some dogs that, and the dogs are like so obviously inspired from the same dog attack Bambi goes through in Bambi. And like, that's, that's really cool. And because this film is so short, it's using the language of film to connect back to that same kind of story and set up the same kind of tone. And you know, use a little bit of that visual shorthand and taking something from something else and, like, bringing it forward. It's just, it's it's really cool. I love to see it. <laughs> That's great. Mm-hmm. I also want to say thank you to Yugo, Yuko Kakami for finding this movie for us. Uh, yeah, I'm just so glad they found this movie for us because it was fantastic. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I would highly suggest other people watch it if they can find it. Yeah. I I do got to say that the quality that we saw was like 480p or something. So it was, it was fuzzy. Yeah. I'd like to get a copy of this one that's in. More high quality. Yeah. I I mean, I'd like to own a copy of this film if I can Mm -hmm. uh, eventually. But yeah, and as far as, you know, other notes go, this movie was pretty revolutionary for its time. It was far and above higher quality than a lot of other animated stuff coming out at this time Mm -hmm. um, and was recognized for that. It was also recognized as being one of the first, you know, animated films where people were really like, 
oh, this might be a little scarring towards children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, like, it, it handles its themes in a pretty mature way. Oh, absolutely. Um, and the original story uh, is based on a book by Takashi Yanase. And this was directed by Masami Hata. Uh, so I just want to throw those names out there. And, you know, I, I don't think this is too dark for children, but it is one of those films that I think is better watched, like, if you're a parent watching it with your kid. So you can gauge, like, how... How your kids react to it. How your kids react to it, and you can, like help them through any, like, the hard parts, you know? Or, you know, if you have a kid who's really sensitive to certain topics, you know, this might be one that you skip. Mm -hmm. But, like, I think for most kids, this is, this is like, a good... A, a good film to watch that's also, like, pretty heavy. But, yeah, this, this was really cool. I really liked this. I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I hope we see more Sanrio stuff. I'm sure we will. I mean, Sanrio is a huge company, but, you know, most people know them for You know, just Hello doing, Kitty. Hello, doing Hello Kitty, and I know they'll buckle down and mostly do that exclusively eventually, mm -hmm. but I don't actually know that much about the company other than the fact that they make Hello Kitty, and I don't know how much animation stuff they do right. compared to just, like, merchandising on one iconic thing. You're right. But, you know, it's like, I, I want to see more of their stuff because, like, I, I'm way past toy fatigue, you know? Mm -hmm. We need other we need other studios that are constantly producing. And it's still going to be a hot minute before Ghibli, you know... Really takes off. Crashes through the door. She says, so, hello, I'm taking over. <laughs> I'm here. Um, yeah, so it, it'd be cool if we saw some more Sanrio films. But, yeah, I think that's going to be it. So, next time... We are staying in Japan and... Actually going to Toei. Yeah, we're going to Toei. And we will be watching Thumbelina. All right. All right, we'll see how this goes. See you then.